Throughout the off-season there's been a fair bit of change for us at the footy club. There's been some physical change. There's also been some personnel change with our coaching and, and obviously some new players coming to our footy club. Draft day is the recruiting team's grand final day. It's your whole year's worth of work basically going into particularly that night. It was definitely unique and we just had to adapt this year and do the best that we can with what we had. It's critical that, that when we are bringing players into the club, whether it be by trade, free agency or the draft, that we're bringing in not only talented players who can help us on field, but the right people as well. It seems to me that there's a, there's a bit of a shift with the attitude of the young guys who are really, really keen to strive and take this group forward and hopefully that can translate for us uh, going up the ladder and back to where we want to be. So we've got everyone here. Perfect. Um, we'll just swing to welcome everyone back. It's the first time we've been meeting as a, as a coaching collective. And I don't want to go and off, cover off in too much depth what we, what we spoke about this morning. Um, but obviously, from a purpose perspective, uh, what Truck mentioned is, uh, is why we're here. So today's session is very much around the start of that process. And this is very much what this preseason is going to be about, continuing that. Uh, that side of things. So, just wanted to welcome everyone back to uh, to this format. We had a week before the players got back with our coaching group and our footy department staff, so that was a great opportunity for us to not just jump straight back into work necessarily, but spend some time together and reflect on the season that was and, and start doing a bit of planning about what we think and what we want the pre-season to look like. Chuck, from the start, was, was really clear in terms of his direction, certainly with me individually as a coach, but also empowering us all as coaches to you know, come up with the way that we want to be seen and he's sort of also really big on his Essendon way of coaching and within that framework we've all got our individual goals and things that we need to look after both in footy and some things probably outside more of football as well. We're kind of focusing on creating a really strong uh, high performing environment right from our coaching group right through the club. It's important that that's built on strong relationships and, and trust and I want our facility and our, and our hangar environment here to be a really strong learning environment. I'm going to do a bit of work in the connection space in terms of um, bringing more of the club together, coaches, players, players, coaches, staff, all that sort of thing, which I think is really good in terms of us individually for a coaching skill set, but also as a club being able to look at some things where we can get some little gains. The tightness of your group and how close-knit it is, is is really reflective on field of how they can play their role and adapt on game day. Similar coaching group to last year in terms of personnel, but some different roles. And obviously, Dan G and Sarah Cousa comes across from Footscray to give uh, some fresh eyes and new perspective. And he's been terrific already. Maybe an Italian coffee on his first day here. So that was a bit of a culture shock for me, but one that I've enjoyed. We spent a bit of time in the hub together. We stayed at the Pines for a period of time, but didn't have a great deal to do with him there. Once that they'd finished their season, we, we got together a couple of times and just connected really well, you know, just talking generally about footy, the way we see the game. You know, you could tell there was a close alignment there and in the three weeks that he's been at the club's already had a massive impact just through his um, knowledge of the game, the environment that he's been in and we're at a stage where our whole coaching group and our playing group are really um, enthusiastic about learning and driven to get better. So bringing a high quality person and also you know, a football person into our coaching ranks was really good. Yeah, you know, I've been really pleased um, to be able to bring him to the club. Welcome back. Well, good to be back. It's been uh, awesome to see a lot of you guys. A lot of seen you guys in here in the last few weeks as well. So. Giant, welcome. Been awesome to have you on board, mate. What are you most excited about? Probably just looking forward to the game next year, but probably yep. train for the summer and get stuck into it, so it'll be good. There's awesome. no audience too. We've got a North Side Hindy. You're back. Mm -hmm. Again, okay, really wrapped to be able to get you into the club. What are you most excited about? I'm um, just excited to be back. It's some familiar faces and just looking forward to a fresh start and having a crack with the boys. Awesome. Nick's obviously a close personal friend of mine. I've played a lot of football with him and coached him and um, seen him grow and come through the ranks as a, as a skinny kid playing 17 years old for me up in Ballarat to an accomplished AFL player to what he is now. I did have a bit to do with him coming to Essendon because I think he's got skills and personality that would really enhance our group. I probably recognised that maybe late in the year last year and 
went to Adrian and Truck and said, I've got, uh, there's a guy here, I think, with a skill set, you know, with potentially us losing a fair bit of speed out of our list that might be able to sort of fill some gaps, but also is of a really good character and will challenge our group in terms of moving forward and be accountable in the way that we want to be able to play and hold ourselves as a playing coaching group. Given my relationship with Nick, I, I discussed it with him to see whether he was open to it. At the time, he was, but then you've still got to get to trade work and get everything done. I was actually with Hondi, he'd already moved house to back out to the northern suburbs and um, yeah, we were, we were a little stressed there for a while to see if that was going to happen. The deal got done, thankfully, and here he is, and I think he'll have a profound impact on our club in the next two or three years. I genuinely believe that. We have two weeks. Okay, main objective this two weeks, okay, is to consolidate a lot of the physical work that you've been doing. Okay, get some re, uh, revisit and reintroduce some of the fundamental concepts that from last year, and it's going to be um, consistent in our game. Okay, some real opportunity for you guys to build your connection um, and your camaraderie. I want you guys in, in here in particular to know, I know there's some senior guys in here, but I don't care how old you are, what number you were drafted, where you were from, if you perform, you'll be rewarded. We need really strong leadership, okay? That's from captain, from president, CEO, and coach, okay? Really clear expectations about what we stand for, okay? And we'll go through a bit more of that later this afternoon and once the boys come back as well. But for me, a really strong, over this pre-season, and once we hit the ground on January, you, it'll start to come to life a little bit more. But really clear understanding of who we are. Coaches are going to be available. Okay, we're going to be there with you, whether it be in the gym, meetings, out on the track. So seek them out. Okay, we'll start to progress and get your, your own individual development plans moving on those uh, during these next couple of weeks. For the first couple of weeks we've had first to five year players in full time, but we've also had about half a dozen regular guys that are coming in on the track as well. So guys like Langford, Francis, McGrath, Parrish, you know, Heppel's been in here a bit as well, although he hasn't been training with the guys. So that's been a great opportunity to get stuck in and just consolidate some of our fundamental concepts of the game. of game plan stuff, there's some stuff that we're working through that we'll probably implement when the full group comes back in January. The young guys have been terrific in terms of they all came back in some great shape. You know, hopefully what we find is the attitude of these guys prior to Christmas spurs on the older guys after Christmas and hopefully we can get that collective buy-in and lift and, you know, we want to improve in some areas by one or two percent and hopefully that can translate for us uh, going up the ladder and back to where we want to be. Yeah, heading into the draft this year with three top 10 picks, it was obviously extremely exciting, um, a position the club hasn't been in before, so there was a lot of opportunity and a chance for us to set up the club for the future. So we were really looking forward to seeing what we could do in the draft. I see myself as I'm wanting to be pretty hands-on during the trade and, and draft period. I think it's really important that I play a significant role during that period. I think it's important that, you know, for us to be able to continue to build for long-term success is bringing in the right people. The draft is months and months of preparation, a lot of long hours, uh, weekend work at the club, sitting here watching Vision. We also lost two full-time members in our department and normally we'd have one or two interns as well. And all of our spotting network, which consists of about 12 part-timers in different states. Some of them stayed on in volunteer capacity, which was incredible, but we did lose a few of those, so we were very short. So this year we're basically just chasing our tail, trying to get Vision from last year's school vision, anything that we could get our hands on really. So I just want to give you an overview first, the draft. This is a really difficult draft, guys. Uh, and it's not a cop out or anything like that, so let's ask a heap of questions. But the problem we got in this draft is we're talking about kids that haven't played. <laughs> and a lot of these kids that we're looking at, you know, are 16 years of age, and then we're trying to make judgment on where they're going to get to. 
there's going to be some really good players that come out of it, but they're all underdeveloped. And I think that when we're getting into our price range of picks, a lot of these kids are going to take 12 months at the minimum to develop. But I don't think in the, in the, in the category that we are, potentially we're going to find anyone that um, you know, takes the competition by storm like Dyson Heppel did when he walked in and, and played every game. I don't think that's going to happen. So Adrian's role is the general manager of list and recruiting, so he oversees ultimately who we draft at the end of the day. Rob is our national recruiting manager, so he looks after the talent pool of the draft for this year, future years, does a fantastic job. He also manages our spotters network. My role is a little bit split. I do a lot of work with Adrian on the list management side of things and player contracts, a lot of compliance in regards to the total player payments and rules and regulations. And then also do a lot of work with Rob as well, working on a lot of administration or analysis leading up until the draft and the, the talent pool of the players that we're looking at, as well as looking after our James Heard Academy, which is our father, son and next generation academy for the club. We're in constant list management discussions throughout the season, um, talking about our needs, where our current list sits, uh, what are our projections, uh, what do we need to be targeting to bring into the footy club. So that's sort of been happening throughout the season. There's a fair bit of work that goes into the lead up of the trade and the draft period as well, but certainly relying heavily on Adrian. He's, he's an experienced campaigner and his team with Rob Force tonight, he just knows the draft pool inside out, which is a great thing for me to have any questions I've got, any bits of information I need, they're able to provide to me. But we work as a team to be able to ensure that we're bringing in the best possible talented kids, but also best possible people that we can into our footy club. We think that the two best tools that potentially may get to us, and there's a risk that they won't, are both Zach Reed and young Cox there, Nick Cox. We should really be looking at bolstering our tall stocks right now for the future of the club. And if they're there, I think we have to seriously consider taking these guys because they're quality tools and will be quality tools for two 250 games, not just you know guys that'll be around for, for five minutes. So Rob, take us through the first one. Yeah, first one's that Reed. Vertical leap's good, isn't it, Rob? Yeah, really good. Above 80 vertical leap. But it runs a 622 KR elite endurance for a favorite side. Um, his physical, he will lay tackles. Kicks a ball really well and got a big tank for a guy of his height, which is really rare to find. If they're comparing him to you know Harry Andrews and, and that sort of thing, and plays a bit like Dustin. So how does some of his stuff compare to Harry Andrews at this age? Are very comparable. Probably in front. He kicks the ball beautiful. His coach yesterday was saying that you know everyone their eyes light up when he gets a footy because you know it's going to hit. There's enough evidence, and we, I, we haven't got all the edits here today, but he does go back with a flight, with courage, not an issue. Like, the ball's there, he's going to go back. And there's a couple really um, brutal tackles that he laid as well. Uh, again, hasn't played this year, so he would have really developed. If it was me, he shouldn't be there at pick six. You, don't, you, you, you bite these guys off. You don't leave these guys because you don't find them. Yeah, all right, this is Nick Cox. Like, again, you're talking about a kid, you just don't find kids that can run like him. 200, Rob? Yeah, 200 on the dot. Pick it up at ground level like that, he kicks like that on his left and right. Yeah, he's, he's got... He kicks set shots left and right. Why? Because he can. Train him. So he doesn't like confidence. No, watch him here. What's, look, look, for a guy 200, what's the balance? as well. And Nick was captain of um, Northern Knights this year. He does have some leadership ability. So you reckon which one have you got ahead of? I think they're both equal and to be honest I don't think I think that you take the one that's not there and then if they're both there you make the decision. Personally I would really seriously consider taking both of them without picks because it just sits our, it sets our tall structure up. The great thing about Adrian is he welcomes any input and feedback. So, you know, when we saw that we we're going to have some early first round draft picks, I was really, really excited. I think each coach can put in as much or as little input as they want into the recruiting. That seems to be where Adrian and, and Rob's philosophy is, that they'll take that on board. But ultimately, the decision comes down to them and, and Truck as the senior coach over what's going to be best for the footy club. Rob, who's next? Might do Perkins. Yeah, go to Perkins. 
Um, yeah, this is obviously all his bottom age stuff. His athleticism's off the charts. You can turn on a dime, um, elite agility, elite jump. Predominantly he's impacted as a forward, but um, the plans would have been to play him as a midfield this year. Um, yeah, he's a goal kicker, natural goal kicker. Won Brighton, Grammar's best and fairest as a bottom major last year. Sure, if Rob Shaw coached him. Yeah, he's a match winner. <coughs> How tall is he? 188. It's tank like Rob. Really good. The type of kid you know we're talking about, where the game's going and slowing it down, opening it up. Who's the one who makes something? He'll be able to one on one, two on one. He'll be able to make stuff happen. Four to the forty. Yep. Yeah, he's that's him. He'll be able to get out of traffic. Yeah. You can see he's happy to take a tackle on and mm. shrug and powerful explosive. So. He might have that just that little thing inside that makes you super special. You reckon he'll get through to us? Or? There's a chance he might. Again, it's going to be from this year. Huh? This is this year's vision, the start of the year, back in February, March. And they reckon he trained the house down in preparation for top end year. He's got bigger. Yeah. 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 If he gets through, happy to take him. You happy to have him? Coach wants him? Like, it's okay for us to just pick guys, but we do, it needs to be a collective buying. Where is the game going? What do we need? Right? Because we're going to be in a position where we can get three really good kids and we can maybe get you know, a nice combination of players, as Truck's saying. There's so many complex things that go into draft night. It's not just about picking up a player. There's live trading of picks, of, of future picks, points. So there's a fair bit that goes on, and our, our guys were really well planned about who they wanted, but also the what-if scenarios, if, if players slip through, if um, other teams want to trade for current picks, future picks. Uh, our list management team and our recruiting team were really well set up with their planning, which makes it critical, which makes those the night run a hell of a lot smoother. But there's always an element of uncertainty and nervousness because you're bringing in the future of your footy club. My main focus heading into the actual draft is to make sure that Rob and Adrian are as relaxed uh, as possible and able to make the best decisions that they possibly can. So anything that I can do to help facilitate that in terms of from a compliance or an administration point of view, that's that's definitely what I do. So keeping the mood calm, Adrian's good at always cracking a joke every now and then, so we didn't have any issues in that department, but just always making sure that everything is prepared and organised and we do have backup plans if things were to go wrong. <laughs> Hey Jules, you there? Just doing one more check up. Yeah, I've got you. Cool, can you hear me clearly? Yes, all good. Perfect. Alright, we'll chat in a few picks time. Cool, good Bye. luck. Thank you, you too. Adelaide on the clock. Alright, here we go. Yeah, so the draft this year was virtual, uh, which was a little bit challenging. There were some pros and cons to it. The pros, obviously, you're at your home base and you can set up almost wherever you'd like. There was a bit of COVID protocol around that, but the cons were that uh, we had to have someone at the ARC, which is at AFL House, and there was a, it was a little bit challenging from a technical perspective, just making sure that uh, everything worked and uh, we didn't have any challenges along the way. We just had to make sure with the five minutes that we had to pick each player, we were prepared and we allowed a lot of time to, to make our decision. Now this is where we could get ourselves into a bit of a pickle. Yeah. They can only take one of the three that we want, okay? Yeah. So we've got plenty of time to make a decision and also plenty of time for the phone to ring. So let's just cool, calm, think it through. Adrian's been fantastic for my development. He's a lateral thinker, a visualiser. He's taught me a lot over my five years at the club and hopefully I've taught him some things as well, but he's extremely passionate. I don't think you'll find anyone as committed or dedicated to the Eston Football Club as Adrian. And I'm really grateful that I work under him and I'm part of his team and yeah, look forward to continuing to work with him moving forward. Okay, Denver Granger Brass has been picked, Gold Coast on the clock, we're the next pick. I reckon as the game goes on and the running power, if they do want to get, getting these guys that can run, Cox and Reed, 
thrown the last halves in the ruck. So we turn our games apart mm. with their running ability. Get them to do the work. Yeah. All right, pick is in, so we're about to start being on the clock. Yep. Are you 100% that we're not trading pick six? No, mate, we're taking cocks. 100%. <laughs> Click OK, Jules. You know what would be pretty special for a kid? He's sitting at home right now, right? And he's thinking, please take me, please take me. It doesn't come up on the screen. Gets a phone call from the coach. He says, I'm about to take you. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There he's going, dude. Hang on. Yeah. Not going rough, though. So I had the opportunity to call Nick Cox, our first pick in the draft this season. I called him just before we called his name out. Tried to call him twice and he didn't answer, so I was wondering if he was even watching the draft. Hey, Jules. Yep. We're going to pick Nicholas Cox from the Northern Knights. Correct? Submit selection. He did call me back about 30 seconds later and said he was on the couch with his mates and didn't want to answer a call from a, an unknown number, I suppose. OK. Good stuff, mate. Well done. See you, mate. Right. I just left the couch. Well, <laughs> oh I think you went back with the poker face back to the family and friends and didn't tell them uh, until they actually saw it on the TV. So that was a that was a unique experience, which um, you know, which I was really pleased to be able to get the opportunity to do. The first of the bombers that picks this evening. Big let's head to Gilmore The Big Eight, yes, and a football club have selected Nicholas Cox from the Northern Knights. <laughs> Let's talk about next pick. We're taking Perkins next. All right, we're on the clock for pick eight or pick nine now. Okay, we're gonna tie. We're gonna get Archie Perkins, Sandringham Dragons, confirm selection. Confirm selection. Congratulations, you come to the Bombers. Yes, Adrian. Oh, my God. Okay, mate. Good luck. I'll ring you later. Pleasure. See you later. Bye, mate. Bye. You can't really prepare for what might happen on the night. You do your best. Um, you just got to think quickly, uh, be ready to make decisions, ensure that we have all the tools in front of us that are going to best position us to make sure that we make the right decision at the end of the day. And the club obviously has full trust in Rob and Adrian in, in making those decisions. and. Primarily my role is, is to make sure that they're in the best environment to be able to make those decisions. This is going alright, AD. It's going alright guys. And now we'll take Reed. And we'll take Reed. We get, Sorry, if we get Reed, you're happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's yeah. that was always the plan, wasn't it? I think that's that's the combo you were talking about for ages. Cool, we're on the clock now for pick ten, Archie Perkins confirmed. Hey Rob, how are you going? Good thanks Zach, how are you going? Yeah, good thank you. You happy to come to the Bombers? Yes I am. Beautiful mate, we're about to call your name out. Lovely, thanks for that. See you soon mate. We're going to put in Zachary Reid, so last name R-E-I-D, Zach Reid for Gippsland Power. Well done truck, you got yourself some tools mate, in your first draft like, yeah. Oh. What did you just, what just happened there? Yeah, so the power did go out mid-draft, which was really interesting. It was about 10 o'clock, I think. There was just a general shutdown of the facility, but luckily we did have the screen on my laptop as well. But there was about a 30 second period there where um, I was holding my breath, but we did get everything on uh, pretty quickly after that. You got, you got on your I've got it on the screen, but <laughs> not ideal. 2020, the year of things to go wrong, so I mean, what else could have gone wrong? I didn't get that. Could you try again? Hello, Ken Wood. Hi, Ken. It's Georgia from Two. Essendon Football Club trading uh, with Which Brisbane program? Football Club. 42. Pick 42. For 49 and 50. Georgia, that's been approved. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, the draft did take a little bit longer than we anticipated. Obviously, when the picks and the bids came in for Josh Aaron, and Cody Brand. We had to make sure that we were ready to go. What was our decision the later that the picks were? 
um, and what was our status moving forward. So I think we handled everything quite well. 88, so match. do you want to match him on? Yeah, of course. You do. Match the bid. Sorry? Match the bid. Yeah. 2020 draft was my fifth draft. Um, and I'll definitely remember it for how unique it was. Each draft is, is different to the other and they're hard to compare different bunch of players depending on obviously where I pick it as well. But the challenge of COVID was definitely unique and we just had to adapt this year and do the best that we can with what we had. I think the boys did a really good job in securing some talent for the future. Lee Tudor and Cam Roberts as development will do a hell of a lot of work with these guys and they already are. But I'm really excited by what I see already. I mean, I watched young Perkins out there today and, and he's powerful and he's a man and he's, he can play some senior footy straight away. A couple of the other bigger boys we'll, we'll be pretty careful physically with. You know, most of the guys come to us with a full year of tack and school footy and have played 35 games and their body's a bit more resilient. Some of these guys have grown eight centimetres in the last year and haven't played any footy. So physically, we're dealing with a little bit of an unknown in that respect, so yeah, just going to take some careful management and observation from us but what we do know is that they can all play and I reckon they can all play senior footy at some stage if they're physically right and we have them in a, in a good mental headspace to be able to deal with AFL footy. I'm really pleased to be able to get Nick Cox, Archie Perkins, Zach Reid at the top end of the draft and then to bring in two of our NGA boys that have been with us the last couple of years as well, Josh Eyre and Cody Brand, we know are going to be really strong prospects for us moving forward. But again, the difficulty is they haven't played any footy this year um, or done much training. So we need to keep that in mind with our expectations for them moving forward, especially in, this, in the short term uh, for 2021.